Hello and welcome to The Fairy Folk, the podcast that takes you on a magical tour to discover the myth and the magic of the United Kingdom without leaving the comfort of your own home. It's time for us to travel together once more. Today's destination is Devon in the southwest of England, famous for its delicious cream teas and scrumpy, and for being the birthplace of Agatha Christie and Captain Robert Scott. But there's a darker side to the county too, one that we will delve into today. In this episode, we will be uncovering two infamous ghostly entities and the unexplained happenstances surrounding them. These Devonshire tales are truly chilling, so you may need your wits about you for this one. Our first journey of the day takes us down to the south of Devon, right in the heart of Dartmoor National Park. On Dartmoor, amongst the stunning open countryside, you will find several rushing rivers, granite tours and dangerous bogs. Although it's tempting to wander off and get lost amongst the tours, today we're sticking to the path, one in particular actually, as our first story takes place on a relatively unassuming stretch of road between Post Bridge and Two Bridges. But don't be fooled by its modest appearance, for this road is actually the site of one of Dartmoor's most famous legends, the story of the Hairy Hands. Back in 1921, a man named Dr. H.E. Helby rode across the moors on his motorcycle, accompanied by two young girls in the bike's sidecar. Not much is known about Dr. Helby, except that he was a medical officer for Dartmoor Prison. The girls travelling with him were the daughters of the deputy governor of the prison, or, if some retellings are to be believed, Helby's own daughters. The details of his journey remain unknown, but whatever the case, he never reached his destination. For somewhere along the barren stretch of road, the doctor lost control of his motorbike and was killed. Miraculously, the children he was travelling with survived and were able to retell the story of how the doctor supposedly grappled with an invisible force before his death. There had been whisperings about something lurking along the road for some time, but it was only after Dr Helby's death that the idea was finally established into local folklore. However, this wasn't the only incident that occurred on the road that year. More and more tales began to flood in of motorists losing control of their vehicles, and one of these was from a British army captain whose motorbike was forced off the road in a similar manner to Helby, though this time he survived to tell the tale. It was this captain's account of the ordeal that finally brought to light the nature of the unearthly entity. He was quoted as saying, It was not my fault. Believe it or not, something drove me off the road. A pair of hairy hands closed over mine. I felt them as plainly as ever I felt anything in my life. Large, muscular, hairy hands. And thus, the legend of the hairy hands was born. The hands were, or what seemed to be, a supernatural entity that had chosen to target motorists, managing to overpower drivers with incredible strength, steering them off the road. The Hands made another notable return in July 1924, tormenting author and folklorist Theo Brown as she camped close to the infamous road. Sensing the Hands' supernatural presence, she managed to keep them at bay with prayers and the sign of the cross. But that was not the last of them as similar reports of hairy hands gripping the steering wheels and handlebars of unsuspecting motorists continue to trickle in throughout the decades, and some, apparently, as recent as 2008. Though the frequency of the sightings has diminished over the years, drivers will be wise to hang on to their steering wheels that little bit tighter when travelling across the moors. There are many theories about the true nature of the hands and their origin. Some believe them to be a malevolent creature similar to a gremlin that enjoys tampering with man-made machinery. Others believe they may have a more demonic nature, considering their aversion to Ms. Brown's prayers and the sign of the cross. One popular theory suggests that the hands actually have an owner, a man who was killed in an explosion at a gunpowder factory. After the devastating blast, the only thing left of the man was, you guessed it, his hairy hands. Though the story may seem far-fetched, it's true that there actually was a historic gunpowder factory along this road that provided gunpowder for miners and farmers needing to clear large rocks from their land. And there was indeed a couple of explosions there that resulted in fatalities. Another theory suggests that the owner of the hands was actually a motorist who was killed on the road, doomed forever to haunt the moors and cause many a driver to befall the same fate as him. However, for those sceptics among us, there remains a more earthly explanation for the hairy hands phenomena. It's normally assumed that the uneven and narrow road surface was likely the cause of the majority of these incidents. The long straight road has tempted many to drive down it too fast, and the combination of that and the road's proximity to a few of Dartmoor's local pubs is largely considered to be the reason for the frequency of motoring accidents. So what do you think really caused all those crashes? 
Do a pair of hairy hands truly haunt the B3212 road in Dartmoor? Or are we safe from the ghostly scourge now that the road surface is smoother and drink driving rules tighter? If you're feeling brave, you can visit the B3212 road on Dartmoor for yourself and take the short trip from Post Bridge to Two Bridges along the haunt of the hairy hands. You can even stop over at Powder Mills Pottery along the way, which is housed in the site of the old gunpowder factory. But please make sure you drive carefully and keep an eye out for any supernatural activity. If you'd like to learn more about this spooky spectre, I suggest listening to Icy Sedgwick's fabulous folklore podcast as she goes into more detail about some of the reported cases and suggests a couple more theories of the hands' origins. Now, let's leave those hairy hands behind as we travel on through Devon, this time to the very edge of Dartmoor, to a market town called Buckfast Lee. Buckfast Lee is most famous for being the home of the Benedictine monastery Buckfast Abbey. Medieval in origin, the town is full of fascinating historic buildings and surrounded by miles of stunning countryside. But it is not the monastery that we will be visiting today, as our journey takes us to Holy Trinity Church, perched atop a hill overlooking the town. From the outside, Holy Trinity looks much like any other church, with grey stone walls and a tall spire. But once you get up close, its true nature is revealed. Holy Trinity is now merely an empty shell of what was once a 13th century parish church. The interior was sadly destroyed in an act of arson, but it is here at Holy Trinity that our next story begins. Not in the church itself, but in its graveyard. Back in the 1600s, there lived a man named Richard Cabell, or Dirty Dick, as he was known to his enemies. Cabell was a squire and a member of parliament in the town of Buckfast Lee. Throughout his life, Cabell gained a horrendous reputation, infamous for his quick temper and passions for hunting, gambling and liquor. Though it's hard to find a detailed account of the exact behaviour that spurned Cabell's monstrous reputation, it was rumoured that he had also dabbled in the occult and practised black magic. There were even suggestions that he may have abused and murdered several local girls, although it should be said that there is little tangible proof of this. Regardless, Cabell's reputation became so bad that evil became synonymous with his name. It was said that he had made the darkest and most desperate deal a man could ever make. He had sold his soul to the devil. But this soulless squire would not be around to torment the town much longer, as he finally met his demise in 1677. The rumour was that Cabell's wife, Elizabeth, tried to flee from her husband by escaping out onto the moors. Sadly, she did not get far. Cabell's anger finally consumed him, and as a consequence for her betrayal, he killed his own wife. But there is a twist to this tale. After the murder, Elizabeth's faithful hound realised what had happened and turned on the squire, ripping out his throat. On the night of Cabell's burial, a group of phantom black dogs, or hellhounds, gathered at his tomb, lamenting their fallen leader, or, perhaps, out to retrieve his soul for their master. Either way, Cabell's ghostly figure was reported to have been seen leading a pack of these hellish hounds across the moors on the anniversary of his death. Naturally, the townsfolk of Buckfast were frightened of Cabell. It seemed as though not even death could put a stop to this monstrously evil man. When it came to his interment, the corpse was buried deeply in the ground with a large stone slab upon his head. Above ground, a tomb was built. A large stone structure with a pyramid-shaped roof and three windowless walls, complete with iron railings. This became the Cabell family sepulchre, secured by lock and key. But it is not so easy to vanquish one in league with the devil. Since his burial in the 1600s, there have been reports of supernatural activity centering around the tomb, most noticeably of an unearthly red glow that emanates from within the iron bars at night. And if you ever feel brave enough to dabble in the occult, it is said that running around Cabell's tomb seven, or perhaps unlucky thirteen times, then sticking your hands through the keyhole of the door may result in a nasty bite from Cabell, or, if you're really unlucky, from the devil himself. 
All manner of evil creatures are thought to have gathered at this tomb over the years, and not just those of a supernatural nature, as occultists and devil worshippers are also thought to have convened there. Interestingly, the Kabul curse seems to have spread, as directly underneath the tomb, in the caves below, a fusion of stalactites and stalagmites are reported to have twisted into the form of a man, which some believe looks as though he is in 17th century dress. And the story doesn't end there, as in the years after Cabell's burial, Holy Trinity Church suffered from a constant stream of bad luck. The church was struck by lightning, a World War II bomb, and several fires. The final one in the 90s eventually gutted the structure. Of course, this could all simply be chalked up to coincidence. Though it's a fascinating story, the legend of Buckfastly's monstrously evil man varies, as stories often do, from source to source. Most interestingly, it seems that Cabell's reputed evilness may have largely been exaggerated, as it's hard to find any strong evidence of what he did to gain such a notorious reputation. There is actually far more information on his apparent afterlife than any of the acts that he is supposed to have committed whilst he was alive. What we do know is that during the English Civil War, Cabell, once a passionate supporter of the king, switched his allegiance to Cromwell when it looked like the outcome of the war might not be in his favour. This was a brave move in a town full of royalists, and it was perhaps this switch of allegiance that rubbed people up the wrong way, setting off the initial spiral that led to his infamy. The dramatic story of the squire murdering his wife on the moors is likely a complete fabrication too, as it appears that she actually outlived him by 14 years. The only solid fact we have is that Cabell did indeed pass away in 1677, as inscribed on his tomb. The hellhounds that often take centre stage in retellings of the story seem to have played a part in his mortal life too, as he is thought to have owned a pack of ferocious hunting dogs. Perhaps these vicious hounds made such an impression on locals that they continued to associate them with the squire, even after his death. This legend is thought to have inspired Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, author of the Sherlock Holmes novels, to base the character of Hugo Baskerville, the notorious squire and owner of Baskerville Hall, at least partially on Cabell. So, what do you think? Was the squire truly in league with the devil? Or was he just an innocent man demonised for his political allegiance? Though there are still so many questions about Cabell's life, and indeed afterlife, it seems, whatever the truth, the burnt-out shell of Holy Trinity Church and the iron-barred mausoleum in its grounds will forever be remembered for their association with Cabell, the devil, and his hellish hounds. And if after all that, you're raring to find out more about this legend, why not take a trip to Holy Trinity Church in Buckfastley and let us know what you find. And of course, if you do visit any of the magical places featured in this podcast, we would love you to share your photos with us over on Twitter and Instagram at the fairy underscore folk. And that's fairy spelled F-A-E-R-I-E. Sadly, it's time for us to leave Devon for today. But don't worry, we'll be back soon for another magical adventure. Thanks for listening and see you soon. The music featured in today's episode was Galway from Incompetech by Kevin MacLeod. Sound effects were from freesounds.org.